Welcome to a video about the 243 Winchester, um, a video that probably will not interest many of you that much. Uh, however, it's definitely holding the title, it holds the title as the most popular calibre for fox and deer in the UK. As a general all-round rifle, if you will go and meet up with uh, your local rifle shooters down the pub perhaps after they've done and their rifle shooting and discuss calibre there's not many that will have not owned a 243 Winchester or do not currently own a 243 Winchester. Uh, in this country generally just called a 243 in America a lot of people like to call it the 243 but in this country 243, 243 win is kind of the m most commonly used words. What is it? Uh, the 243 has been around since 1955. In 1955, this 308 had been around for a little bit of a while, and Winchester loaded it up to go in their fairly standard Model 70. They still, you know, been made for a million years. Um, they loaded it up to fit in that, and uh, and their lever action rifle. To be fair, uh, though we didn't probably see many of those in this country, but they made a 308 neck down to a 243 as a all round varmint weight caliber. 243 is 6 mil um, for those of you who don't like to work in inches or anything like that. Why it is so popular, or why it was so popular back then and proceeded to be probably one of the more popular ones now, especially here in the UK, is um, bullet variation. When it first came out, you know, 70 or 80 grains was quite common, um, all the way up to 105 grains, so you could shoot long range varmint with it, foxes, that sort of thing, all the way up to you know, deer species. Might not be the most proficient on the larger ones, but you know, they're perfectly adequate. Um, nowadays, you can knock it all the way down to, if you load yourself, probably 50 grains, probably less. Um, though commonly, 55 grain is a factory loaded round. All the way up to 105 grains. Though, like I said, most rifles will stop at, stop liking bullets above 100 grains. You know, they come in about a one in 10 twist, most 243 rifles, and it's strange to have anything bigger than that or anything suitable for much bigger than that. Some rifles like the 105s but generally if you stick between 55 and 100 grain you should be fine. And to be fair that's enough. With a 55 grain bullet it shoots very much like a treble 250 fox round. Um, fast, flat, stable, accurate. However with a 100 grain it shoots nice, soft, still good for long range, ballistically very very sound immense deliverance, deliverance is a nice word, um, down the other end and say they they do pack a punch for what is essentially quite a small bullet. Um, so in front of us we have a few options uh, that we're going to look through, a sort of, not that bullets look different but just to compare some of the weights versus the speeds the bullets go we've got a selection of Winchester 17, 90 and 100 grains, uh, a selection of Hornady 75, 75, 58, 195 grains, a box of Remington, a box of Winchester Varmint X. Uh, Winchester are the 95 grain active tips and the Varmint X are a 58 grain ballistic polymer tip. Polymer tip for rapid expansion. Actually really good ammo on a budget to be fair, the real good ammo on a budget. Uh, Seiko holds a fairly good mid-range, to be fair they're still they're very reasonably priced by comparison to other things. Hornady, probably one of the favourites at the moment um, ammunition wise, really found their name with the 17 HMR in terms of, as they found their name, found popularity in this country with the 17 HMR and that's kind of got their, the ball rolling quite well. Um, quite dear now, used to be very reasonably priced but quite dear, a eh? cracking pun. Here we go, let's look through some of them. So, the 243 Winchester, the most popular entry level stalking calibre of banks. We'll start with the heaviest which is going to be 100 grains. Um, for this, I'm not going to use a Seiko because their ballistic information isn't quite that good, whereas Hornady love to give you just about every bit of information possible. I'm going to put those to one side, I think. Now we start with 100 grain, just look at some of the, the, the readings on them. With 100 grain you get 2,960 feet per second. That's quite fast for a 100 grain bullet. Um, you know, when you consider that a 308 won't be touching that with 150 grain, Speed kills. It's um, a, ter a terrible saying that a lot of rifle use <laughs> shooters use, I know, but um, speed does kill. For example, a Treble 250 is a good rifle because it carries so much speed in a 50-55 grain bullet. 
Duval 3 is good because you end up with an awful lot of energy and hence an awful lot of transference of energy. Yes, you can end up with a little bit more mess than something a bit heavier and slower like a 308, but I was going to say, there's no such, there is, there's no such thing as overkill, that is a lie, you know. When we're talking about harvesting meat, you want to reserve as much meat for the game dealer as possible. However, when it comes to a 243, you're going to be shooting a few foxes with it. You want them to die. You don't want to, you know, clip it. You want it to die. Um, and as such, you want to put a bullet into its cat body cavity and, and create some sort of red soup. Uh, so, speed kills. And that, I'd say the same really goes for deer. You don't want to be chasing them down or not doing the job. So if you want to shoot it in straight and heart lung with a 100 grain soft point, this will do the job. Especially travelling 2,960 feet per second. Uh, moving down with the 95 grain SST. The SST is Hornady's uh, ballistic tip offering to the market. Very, very good actually. Uh, they obviously, they've got the VMAX, they've got all sorts of other things, but the SST is there. Um, I don't remember what it stands for now. Something. Don't think it really matters. It stands for much death. Um, I've got a few friends who shoot these and they are very messy bullets. However, for those of you who are trying to take down something a little bit bigger, fallow, that sort of thing, I know a few of the people who I know who shoot fallow with 95 SSTs do not have an issue. But then you won't have an issue with one of these if you shoot it in the right place, much the same as this. However, as an, if you're a ballistic tip boy, you can't go too far wrong. Um, yeah, nice bullet, even they've got a V8 on the box. I mean, that's that's how good it is. These tank at 3,185 feet per second. That is really very, very fast. Very fast. For a 100 gram projectile, that's not bad. Which is the whole point in this round, is that you could pump your 308 case up to 243 that wasn't 243, but you know, it was a 308 Winchester, as it was neck down to a 243 or 6mm head so that you can get extra speed off the same powder which they have achieved 3185 feet per second going down to the 75 grain VMAX another ballistic tip a little bit lighter but still does a really nice job actually 3580 feet per second even faster is the 58 grain VMAX. This is the ultimate varmint round. I know a lot of people who shoot right with the 58 grains and they seem to do the job. And you know, if you're gonna head or neck shoot anything bigger, these are perfectly adequate. And legal round here. So um, why not? 3,925 feet per second and a whole thousand feet per second faster than the 100 grains. Um, and when you consider that's a lot of speed, that is a vast amount of speed. Um, that transferred into actual information uh, the, all the Hornady boxes work off a 200 yard zero, which is probably a little bit American. You know, the average shot around here in Hampshire is probably 75, 80 yards in reality, not much further. So, we would zero our rifles at 100 yards, generally speaking. However, so, having zeroed your rifle at 100 yards, we're going to work back with the, and we're just going to go from the 58 grain up to the 100 grain here because that's the biggest difference. And everything in between, if you want to know, ask, however, it's all on Hornady's website. We'll go from there. So, we're talking about a rifle that's zeroed at 100 yards will have 0.7 inches drop at 200 yards. That is an inch. That, in stalking, killing terms, that's bang on. You point it at it and pull the trigger. This is an inch and a half with 100 grains. That's not too bad. Um, again, 200 yard shots are rare, but the ability just to point at it and pull the trigger is good. When we're talking about a 308, you're going to be talking about two or three times that in reality, maybe not, but about two times that. And, you know, less experienced stalkers, more wobble, more zip issues, that is an issue. Um, you know, you're going to start shooting low, shooting high, aiming off, not knowing what you're doing. There is a, a beautiful um, sort of incompetence barrier with a 243 and that there's just so little drop, you just literally out to 200, 250 yards, you point it at it and pull the trigger and it's very likely you're going to do a good job um, with very little variation. At 300 yards you then, this is where you start to see a difference, four and a half inches drop in a 58 grain um, from the 200 yards zero and 7.1 inches with the 300. So you can really see this one slowing down. However, 300 yards, again, a long way to shoot. If you're shooting 300 yards often it's more likely you're shooting foxes which is why you're going to be using these fast flat bullets, which do, to be fair, ballistically compare very well with Trevor 250s. A little bit heavier than 243 as a bullet goes, but I'd rather hit a fox badly with a heavy bullet than badly with a light bullet. Um, 
It's got a bit more takedown power, a bit like the 308 over the 243 that's got the heavier weight, so it's got more energy transference in sort of hitting it with a heavy hammer way, uh, rather than these sort of lighter fast ones that get more piercing, more hydraulic expansion. Again, there's a lot of videos of people shooting ballistic jelly with 243s and you're able to see what it does. Um, there you go. After that, uh, we'll skip the 400 yards. At 500 yards, you have 30 inches. There's like two and a bit foot of drop with these. That's not bad. 500 yards. 500 yards is a long way. I don't think I could name somewhere I could see 500 yards properly around here. Whereas with these, you have 42.5. So an extra foot, essentially. An extra, you know, that's that's a deer's chest. That's two foxes' chests. That, that's a lot of drop. But then you're not going to shoot these at 500 yards, so this is really a complete waste of our time to discuss it. However, you know, at that 300 yards, you can still be confident with these, whereas these are much more of a close range bullet. 100, 150 yards, 200 yards maximum, really, um, unless you want to get to know your rifle. But who shoots deer at that distance? Lovely, aren't they? Nothing like a 243 box of ammunition. Especially holographic boxes, shiny boxes do something. So why choose a 243? Uh, this isn't really a sales pitch as such, so I'm going to play devil's advocate. The 243 is the minimum legal deer calibre in the UK and has been since what, 1963. Very, very popular. As such, every manufacturer makes a 243 bullet. Every manufacturer makes a 243 bullet. More to the point, every shop stocks 243 bullets common weights as well so if you want a 100 grain soft point you'll be able to go and buy a 100 grain soft point at your local gun shop whereas if you bought something a little bit odder perhaps 6.5 by 55 you're going to be stuck with what they've got you have to buy in bulk or batches or order in that sort of thing whereas oh Christ I just need another box to last me out the I don't know the dough season I'm just going to go buy a box down the shop that's fine they will have it that is guaranteed they will also have it everywhere from Cornwall up to very north of Scotland, it's very likely in a gun shop you'll find 243 ammunition. Secondly, they're much more likely, to, strangely enough, they're much more likely to grant you a 243 than a larger calibre when you first apply for your licence. Um, they're very capable of doing those long range shots, I'm not sure why they don't trust people with slightly larger calibres when you first apply, but this is good. Secondly, they're almost guaranteed to give it to you for foxes whilst out stalking and foxing, whereas if you apply for a 308, they might demand you buy a foxing rifle on the side. Unnecessary, perhaps. Uh, certainly unnecessary to own one rifle and another rifle when a 243 will do both jobs for you. However, isn't it nice to own two guns? Again, playing devil's advocate. The 243 will kill every animal or every deer species in the UK legally and well. Some would argue fallow, reds, you might want something bigger, they'll be dead but they won't know it, they're more likely to run, they don't have the same knockdown power as a 308, they don't have the same super mega soup death as a 270 Winchester short mag. However, head and neck shoot it, it will die. If you chest shoot it, you might just have to find it and that's only an issue in slightly dense cover. And I say find it, it's likely, if you shoot it in the right place, that it will either drop on the spot or drop within 25 metres. 25 metres can sometimes seem like hell if it's high brambles or uh, dark conifer plantation or something like that. However, it will do the job. It really will do the job. And it does the job well. There's a reason that everyone likes it. And the reason not to go for something bigger is that they are sweet to shoot as well. I've shot a lot of 243s and I've shot a lot of bigger guns as well. And... Bigger guns, even with moderators and stuff on, they still kick. They still are harder to shoot. A 243 is the smallest rifle you can get legally and one of the nicest. It's nice, smooth. Um, I expect there's some footage somewhere at the end of this camera thing. We'll be able to drag off a computer of one of us shooting a 243. They're good. There is nothing wrong with them. That is why they are so popular. And the reason that they remain to be popular is because of the bullet variation. 58 to 100 grains is a mass variation. Everyone goes, oh, I shoot a 30 cal because I can go from 120 grains up to 220 grains. There is nothing in this country you need 220 grains, but not really. Not really. Not in a 30. No. 100 grains will do it, and if doubt, 105 will do it if your barrel copes with it. And I hope that was enough uninteresting information about a 243 to keep you entertained. But again just to get, put some, shed some light on it, why it's good, why it's not. 
there's nothing bad about it, I should say. The only reason to go for something bigger is because you want something bigger. The only reason to go for something smaller is because you want a specific foxing rifle. However, the reason this is popular is because you can invest two rifles amount of money into one rifle and optic combination and end up with something really nice. You can have it with a 243 that will do every animal for every task, grab it out of the cabinet and it will do everything, as opposed to having an average foxing rifle in treble 250 and a average deer rifle in 308. So, so there you have it, there is the 243. Uh, brought to us by Winchester in 1955, long may it continue to rain. Uh, I remember, I don't remember, but I remember hearing at the time it was either this or the 257 Roberts that was gonna be the popular new best thing. Um, and I'm kind of glad it's this. I couldn't be bothered saying 257. 243 is a really nice thing. Well, the tongue just nice, doesn't it? And there you go. Hope you've enjoyed.